Hello and welcome to part six of my series where I try to implement uh, a Pong clone in the Bevy game engine. Um, the last time we implemented Collision. Uh, but I think for now we should make some kind of playing field so that we can, uh, for one, just rescale the window, resize the window and um, have every, everything placed accordingly and also be able to uh, have the ball bounce uh, at the top, for example. So I guess what we are going to do for that is, let's see, I mean, we do have an event where, where we uh, get notified if the window is changed, but I guess, um, we still need our playing field. Maybe we need to adapt all the sizes manually. So what do we have? We have our paddles, which are a sprite with paddle, player and collider. We have our ball, but essentially I guess we don't really need to have an actual playing field per se. It would be enough to like be able to just size everything correctly. I guess what we need for that is a query, I guess. So let's go to learn the book queries. I mean, I should be able to just create a query, should I? Resources. Plugins. Not sure if we can just create queries on our own. I mean, we could check. Uh, where is it? Query. We can actually construct a query, but in order to do that, we need a word. And I don't think we get access to the word. So. Methods set remove parameter new enter unsafe. So I think we actually do have to rely on the game engine to pass us everything that we need. So probably in this listener, like the the window resize listener, where we are listening to the uh, resize event, we also do need all our other components. I'm currently not quite sure how to how to do this the the, the best way. Um, let's just get our um, our players for now. What are they called? Paddles. So we want everything that has a paddle and a not transform but sprite, I guess. So we want from our paddle, want the sprite component and the, I guess we also need the transform, do we? Where's the start position coming from? From here. All right. Um, So let's let's just ignore that for now because we don't have any collisions between the paddles and the wall yet because there are, are no walls for now but we want the paddle and 
also, we also need the player component. So one thing we need is like the the sprite, the not all sprite components, I guess, but yeah. What what is in there? Sprite, mesh, material, main pass, draw, render pipelines, transform, and global transform. We only need sprite, transform, paddle, and player. Is there a way to get these components? Let's take a look at sprite components. Maybe there's a way to create our own components struct for the paddle. Trade bundle. That looks interesting. A statically typed collection of components. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So how, how can we create one? Oh, it's actually, oh, it's a trait. Which requires us to implement dynamic bundle. This is weird. Hmm. I really want to bundle stuff. Setup apps, ECS, plugin. Is there something about bundles? Bundle? No. Apps, setup, resources. I guess there's no bundles in here. Why is my internet so slow? Hmm. Dynamic bundle. Is there no way to get access to the source code? Maybe let's take a look at the sprite components and how they are implementing the bundle trait. So, sprite components. Derive bundle. Oh, we can just derive it. I mean, we we can try. So let's let's go back and um, create our own. I mean, it, it's it's getting quite chaotic, but whatever. Um, let's create our own paddle components. Maybe let's put them next to the paddle itself. <clears throat> Struct paddle components. So what did we want? We want paddle. I mean, this is a zero size type. Doesn't make any sense to actually get access to it, but whatever. Um, we want the sprite. Actually, maybe we want all of them to be there, like the paddle, player, collider, and sprite components. Okay, sprite components, sprite components, what was it? Paddle player collider, exactly. Paddle player, a player and collider, collider, and let's derive bundle on it. See if that works. What? Parentheses? Am I stupid? Derive bundle. Yeah, okay. So use bevy bundle. 
Where is it? Not dynamic bundle, we want the normal bundle. Bevy ECS bundle, makes sense. ECS bundle. Let's see if that compiles. I want to know if it if it can derive it or not. Oh, it's quite slow to compile, interesting. But it did actually compile. So that's great. So let's see if we can transform this in uh, paddle equals paddle components, then put the sprite components in there. Uh, like that. Then put in the paddle, the player, and the collider. And then commands.spawn paddle. Come on, Rust format, do your job. Um, if, yeah, maybe it doesn't want to. Expected sprite components found bool. That's interesting. <laughs> Not sure how, how it finds bool in there, but hey. That looks good. And that didn't seem to work. Or didn't seem to have worked. But why? Maybe it's just the color. Where did we set the color? In the sprite components? Sprite mesh material. Handle color material. So it's part of the color material, I guess. Let's search for white. I don't even remember. Maybe we did make it white. I'm not sure. Um. Let's take another look at the sprite components. Derive bundle, implement default. Anything implemented on the bundle trait. Aesthetically type collection of components. Hmm. Dynamic bundle. Interesting. I'm not sure if I'm just doing something wrong or it just isn't supposed to work like that. Let's take a look here. Do I have a local clone? No, I don't, but I can make one. Git clone https slash slash github.com slash bevy engine slash bevy. Let's clone it and just go to the examples direct directory and uh, keep a lookout for the um, What's the name for the bundle trait? 
if it's used there anywhere. I mean, otherwise I'm, well, it's not, it's not, it's not that nice otherwise, I guess. But we, we can still try to, to use the, the components to, to make a query, I guess. Debbie examples rip grab for a bundle. We get a lot of bundle, but those are just the names of uh, actual bundle types from the library itself. So. rendering hello word 3d rendering application plug-in group assets entity component system guide event hierarchy creates a hier hierarchy of parents and children entities that looks interesting Traders, tools, UI. Sprite bundle. With children. I think maybe children are just like children in, in terms of position in 3D sp space and rotation translation, I'm not sure. Let's take a look at the documentation again. With children, not children, but children. <sighs> Great. Spawn, current entity with bundle. Yeah. Let, let's just not do that for now. Let's go back to the way it was before. Remove our bundle and do it the manual way. Maybe somebody can tell me how to do it properly or if it's actually possible what I'm trying to achieve here. But for now, let's like create a paddle tuple, I guess. Um, Type paddle. Let's do it like this. Whatever. Um, is a tuple made out of sprite components. Paddle player and collider. Like this. And can we actually query for? these components transform collider sprite components not sure I mean I mean we're we're probably going to find out anyways let's do this again um, let paddle equals paddle components does it work like that this so we have our sprite components um, the reason why I'm putting the components in here is because I want to guarantee at compile time that my list of components is actually the same list that I'm spawning And the way I'm achieving that is by like doing this so we can so we ensure that it is paddle components and we can now just unwrap it I guess Ugh. maybe not like that but as paddle components maybe and then Nope. Sprite 
components player collider and paddle is missing like this this should work actually does does this work paddle components well it does whatever and now we can spawn them again as I said, this little trick guarantees that I'm actually uh, that that this type pedal components is actually the same thing that I'm spawning here, because if I weren't using any of these four, I uh, I would get a warning that there is a, an unused variable, and if I didn't put all of these here, I wouldn't conf I I would have some missing. Uh, components and I can then also use the paddle components in a query let's just let's first check that it still works so it works and now let's add it or add a query over the paddles in the resize listener. Let's see. Um, paddles. Um, paddles are. Also, do they have a velocity or something? We'll see. Uh, a query, a mutable query. Was it called query mute? Oh no, actually, it needs to be mutable inside of the query. A query over paddle components. Does this even work? HECS query. I mean, that doesn't look right to me. Oh, of course. Of course, it doesn't. It doesn't work like that. Um, let's reset that. it a different way. Let's sprite components equals the sprite components here. Oops. Like this. Let paddle equal paddle. Let uh, player equal we already have a player let collider equal collider and now the paddle components are mutable sprite components nah no 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 I'm not doing it that way. I'm, I'm just going back to just doing everything manually. So we have a mutable reference to a transform, a mutable reference to sprite, We have a paddle and we need to know which player it is like that. Is that better? Wrong number of type arguments. What on earth? Oh, 
Oh, it actually compiles. It's just that my ID is complaining. Hmm, interesting. So if there is a resize event, only then do we want to change our paddles. We want to for the like for the players what do we have? The start position. And actually we want the sprite itself based on the window size. Um, the window size is just width and height. Type was that view size? View size height is also u size. The paddle sprite sprite match self. The left player, the left player is a sprite what type of size? Resize mode manual and automatic. We have a vec two. So actually we just Paddle size and position, and we want a vec two. And what what does the transform contain? So let's see the transform has a translation, and that's actually what we want. So the translation and make three. So size and translation. Let's call it translation. Like that. So let the size be maybe always what's the width of these? Paddles twenty, like let's say const paddle width. No, not player paddle. Const width equals twenty dot zero, like this. And the size is a vec2 of x and y. So x is the width, which is paddle width. And the height is, let's say, 20% of the window height, like this. Translation uh, let's say const margin e uh, F thirty two 
equals 50.0 maybe what is it complaining about now what I think the compiler has gone stale or at least the IDE has gone stale whatever the translation is a vec3 of exposition now this depends on the actual player so match self like that and we have a vec what not sprite I'm a player left and right vec2 of like Margin, paddle, margin, paddle, margin. It's probably incorrect because the translation is maybe not the corner on the on the top left. But we'll see uh, what happens. Like two new. Um, width as f32 minus paddle margin and like let's say the same for uh, the um, Oh, actually not width as f32 probably we should also subtract the the width of the paddle itself minus pedal margin minus paddle width and in the in the other direction like in the minus y direction so this is uh, well whatever we'll see We also want the paddle margin in the y direction. And this should then be extended by 0.0, .0 in the z axis. Now we can return size and translation like that. And using that in the resize case. Um, we have the player so let's first query um, for paddle no let's see for sprite transform paddle and player in paddles dot iter mute does this work how did this this work oh just just iter no it's actually iter mute it, it should work like that does it though like this Oh, I'm stupid. I'm not sure why, but always when I'm uh, like doing these screencasts, I can't write basic Rust syntax anymore. <laughs> Seems like it. So the sprite needs to be mutable. And uh, let's see, uh, let's size, comma, translation equals player dot size player dot what did I call it paddle size and translation that's it paddle size and translation given the 
resize event width and resize event height like that. Expected U size found. Oh, now it works. The sprite dot size equals size and the transform dot translation equals the translation and that should be it. Now if I resize the window the paddles should jump in awkward positions. Interesting. Not sure where, where the other paddle is. Hmm. So maybe zero is in the center. Oh yeah. So here in the center is point um, like po uh, coordinate zero. So we have to go to the left and to the right of the zero position, I guess. So in in the end, we just need to adjust this. So the size stays the same as we already calculated. I mean, if I make the window smaller, the paddle gets smaller. And if I make the window bigger, the paddle gets bigger. That's all how it should be. But if uh, if the the center of the screen is is coordinate zero, then the we need like um, the width as you as f thirty two divided by two, like half of the width. Not divided by two, but divided by two dot zero. We need to take that minus the margin and actually we want the paddle margin minus half of the width for the left paddle and the Y translation is just zero because it should stay in the center of the screen not zero but zero dot zero yeah exactly that's where it's supposed to be or is it was the margin that big? Oh, it's 50. Okay, it's, it's all, all right, I guess. I mean, we can reduce the, the margin to maybe 30. And now do the same for the right one. It's, let's use the half of the width. And subtract the margin like that and use 0.0, .0 on the right that looks more like it and that's exactly what I was looking for Oh, the other thing, maybe resize the ball as well. I'm not sure. Let's first like commit that. So the commit name would be resize and reposition paddles on window resize. Like that. Um, 
the ball. Let's give the ball also um, a similar method. Input ball. Also, I guess the velocity needs to depend on uh, the size of the screen as well. So the both the ball velocity and the yeah. Um. Yeah, let's first add the velocity to the paddle. Velocity. Is back to like the ball's velocity and the paddle also where did we have the paddle yeah here right here should we derive default for the paddle I mean I guess yeah we sh we could not derive um, Let's say it, it, it starts with a, def uh, a velocity of zero. So derive default like that. Doesn't move. Makes sense. I mean, it should only move if we're actually moving it with our key uh, strokes. Paddle velocity vec2. And hmm. velocity does not depend on the player, only the size and translation depends on the player. So we can give the paddle a velocity method. Now the question is, give, do we give it a velocity method or a self-mutating uh, resize method? I, I, I think we can give it a self-mutating resize method. Also, why should a player know about a Why should the player know about paddles? Should only the paddles know about the player? Hmm. Let's not fix that right now. We have a function resize window no, win update after window resize width view size and height view size and it takes self a self reference uh, self dot velocity equals hmm I mean, for now, we can just reset everything on window resize. Not something we should do in the long term, but for now, it should be okay. Um, the velocity is... Oh yeah, it's just a regular velocity. No, it's not the velocity we want to change, it's actually the speed. Speed is just an F32. And the speed is let's say I mean this is probably in seconds, so how many pixels per seconds I guess. So we want maybe 
how fast do we want it to go from the top to the bottom. Maybe three, se uh, three seconds or something like that. So let's take the height as F32 divided by three and see if that works out. And remove the default speed. And uh, then make this mutable. Update the paddle after window resize. So we actually do need the paddle now. And we need it to be mutable. Paddle dot update after window resize. Why doesn't it find it? Width and height. And it needs to be mutable as well. And let's say let width equals resize event dot the width. The same for the height. that won't compile but I want to know where the speed is used so this is the default paddle this must not be an integer and the speed is now actually part of the paddle so Paddle dot speed. Like that. Oh, just the height is used. So one, two, three. And if we Make it smaller. One, two, three. Seems to work. But now also the ball's speed should be dependent on uh, the screen size, I guess. that it still compiles and during that I can commit um, update speed after window update pedal speed after window resize or on window resize that over here the ball does the ball have a speed no it has a velocity hmm that is unfortunate maybe this needs to be split up in a direction and a direction and a speed like this import ball fn velocity um, 
um, is vec2 and it is speed times direction dot dot direction dot why is it not working oh me stupid um normalize maybe is it normalize Normalize to length 1.0. That looks to be correct. So the default speed of the ball. Let's implement default for the ball. Impl default for the ball. Like that. Let's take a look at. Oh, it's already implemented down there. Then let's move that up. The default velocity is now a default speed. Actually, I mean the direction makes sense, but the speed let's just use zero for now because as as soon as uh, the window starts up, we get a resize event and it will just create it properly. So the direction is yeah, that sounds all right. Not sure if the movement works correctly though. The ball movement system, time delta times the velocity, like that. Right here we only want the direction. But it doesn't really make any difference if we're using the direction or the velocity here because we're just mirroring it. Maybe I should not have enabled uh, the exper the experimental uh, name resolution engine in in the Rust plugin uh, of my IDE. Maybe that's causing all the problems that you're seeing. So now we also need the ball, which is a query. of mutable sprites mutable transform mutable ball like that for so mutable sprite mutable transform and mutable paddle in ball dot iter mute I hope there's only one ball ball but who knows then the we need uh, the size and translation thing I, I think yeah let's do let's just do the same thing as with the paddles it's not the nicest abstraction, I guess, but it, it works like that. There's no player. So 
So the size is, let's say, the board was 50 50. Maybe, hmm, like point. 0.05% no like 5% of the screen width or height let's use width or no no let's use the height 5% of the height let's uh, ball width equals Five percent of the screen height. That size equals vec two of ball width, ball width, and the translation is just default. So we have the size and Translation Vec three default translation like that. That should work. And we didn't need the width either in this case. And this is called window width. Yeah, whatever. Wall size and translation. Window height. Let's rename that as well. Not, yeah, that as well. Window height. Come on. Window width and window height. Also, I know what might be better for the paddle. Just put in the, the mutable stuff. Let, let's see. Um, let's do that after we update the, the, the ball. Um, let size comma translation equal ball dot what did we call it I don't have any usable memory <laughs> ball dot ball size and this is not a paddle, this is a ball. And actually, let's do it like this and mute ball. Translation uh, using the height. Maybe I should use the resize event. Ah, let's let's do that later. Let's do some refactoring after after that. Um, ball size and translation and self 
yeah, whatever. It should probably compile sprite.size equals size and trans transform dot translation equals translation. Let's see if it compiles. Also change the settings to not use the experimental name resolution engine. Maybe that helps. I mean, this is a sprite, this is a sprite. Ball size and translation method not found in transform? Oh, right. I switched the, the order around. I'm just stupid. Ball does not need to be mutable. That is correct. Is it? Is it though? No, it's not. We, we still need to, to update the speed. So it needs to be mutable. Um, Update after window resize. Let's do the same for the ball. Update after window resize. Hmm. Let's also use the height as a reference here. Can change that later during refactoring. Not returning anything, and this is mutable. So that speed equals. Let's see. Maybe twice the speed of the paddles, uh, which was. Three dot zero. So, maybe. Window height divided by. One dot five. that still not happy whatever ball dot update after window resize and we give it the height like that and now it should still work or work again let's say oh that that is quite a fast ball hmm interesting <laughs> yeah Let us think about the algorithms for determining speed and such uh, later. For now, let's just make a commit. Um, update ball speed and position on window resize. And after that, let's do some refactoring. So I think the player should probably not know about the paddle. So let's take this win update after window resize method on the paddle. Let's give it a resize event. Window resize, window resize, like that. Does this contain ID width and height? Yeah, right. And now we can use the resize event dot width 
no, the height, it was the height, like that. And also, let's give it all the other stuff we need. So, paddle size and translation. Let's move this here for reference. We need a size and a translation. Resize event, size component. Vec tool and a translation component. Oops. Mutable reference to Vec three. So now we can mutably update those and have all the code in in, in one place. So the speed is updated and also. Based on the height, that window height equals resize event dot height as F thirty two. Like that. Now we can remove the casts. Like that. I think I removed one too ma many. No, I did not. Left and right. Um, this is the X translation we don't care about this at all like this That translation equals the a vec three of x translation zero dot zero and zero dot zero. No extending anymore. Um, remove the cast. What did I break? I still need to subtract the margin. Like this. And the width divided by 2.0. Like that. And now we can say um, size component dot size uh, it size component dereferenced equals this new value and the translation component like that that should work but we need to update the call side as well. So for the paddle, um, paddle dot update after window resize uh, with the resize event. And actually the resize event is by reference. Like this. Resize event. Um, we also want the oh, oh oh, and we need the player as well. So player paddle 
not sure if it's a, that's the correct syntax. Not the paddle. Um, the, the size and the transform. Is that correct? Mute? No? We'll see. Like this. Player size transform. Resize event. Player component. Player. Let's rename these. Translation like this. And this might now actually compile. Who knows? Constructor is not with. Oh. Of course. Could not find value size in scope. Um, sprite dot size. That should be the right thing. Transform the translation. Yeah. Um, mismatch types expected enum player found reference to player I mean whatever it's a copy type is it it should be at least derive copy I mean, the player is probably smaller than uh, than a reference to a, a player. Because the player should fit in one byte and the reference is 8 bytes on a 64-bit system. So, yeah. No-brainer. Interesting. No, we can also reset our, our ball like that. And maybe... Yeah... <laughs> nice. Now let's just put the paddle in its own um, its own module. Mod paddle like this. Move everything paddle related in there. Paddle and paddle implementation block. this yeah the paddle movement system So yeah, the paddle now needs to be public. The update after window resize also needs to be public. Actually, I didn't want to split the windows like that. Mod paddle. Paddle movement system should also moved I guess over here public baby ECS baby quad time baby input input baby input key book 
vary from bevy ECS and a transform from transform components. I guess that should work now. Well, let's see. Pedal needs to be imported like that. The not sure what the problem is here. We'll see in a moment. And the pedal movement system also needs to be imported. Use create paddle paddle movement system like that. Private type player and public interface. Um, then make the player public at, at least. Well, it, it, it can be public, it's not a library. Still works. Let's call it refactor paddle. Um, let's rename that commit. And let's do the same for the ball as a velocity and update after window resize, which takes, let's see, window resized. Size and translate trace translation window resized. Actually, it's a resize event. Resize event window resized. And a size which is back to the reference. And a translation which is a mutable reference to VEC3. Let window height equal resize event dot height as F32, and we don't need these parentheses. Window height that and now we also need this stuff um, yeah the ball width is calculated the same way, way as before but now we use the size that has been pa uh, passed in and the translation same thing that this method doesn't exist anymore let's update the call site we have a not a height anymore but a resize event we have a mutable reference to sprite.size and a mutable reference to transform.translation all of that is now encapsulated like this. So the, I mean, it's not completely encapsulated because you need to know what to, what to pass to this method, but the compiler will help here. Let's check that it still works and it does not. Oh, update after window resize is what the method is called. Not compile build, but release build. No, it's not a release build. It's just not running in. It's a debug build run, not running in the uh, debugger. And let's do the same thing as we did with the paddle. 
mod ball, create the module like this, and now move the ball in there. Like this, abstract public velocity and public update method. Like this, add all the imports. looks like it's it like that's it the ball needs to be imported um, oh and also the spawn stuff could probably move into the other modules as well maybe even using a spawn spawn trait maybe there is a tr spawn trait we we'll, we'll we'll take a look at that later spawn paddle for movement system let's put the system here we need resources time query and transform Oh, that's not what I was looking for. Transform components transform like that. Like that. Now the direction is not public anymore. Maybe we should make it public. Maybe we should put the ball collision system into the ball module as well. That could also work. So the collision system is public, but speed and direction don't necessarily need to be public anymore. I'm not quite sure. Actually, yeah, if we use the ball movement system and also move it in there, ball movement system where is it oh we already moved it in there so these are now public use create ball ball collision system and ball movement system like this not used anymore player player I mean this is also probably not the way it's supposed to be it, that should be part of the paddle but yeah let's just run the compiler for now because the ID is un reliable let's have the collider collide method collision no collision where's the collision coming from That should work. Private type collider, so let's make it public. Where's the collider type? What? Where did the collider type? Oh, it's here. I was in the wrong module. So, pubstruct collider. And now it might actually compile. I'm not sure. Oh, 
Okej. Okay. Um, right, we have moved the wall outside. Yeah, let's leave the third position in the in the player for now. It's it's okay, I guess. Let's see if it still works. It still works. And let's commit real quick. Make sure that there's no compiler warnings. Maybe run Clippy. Nothing to complain about. Um, yeah, refactor ball. But I think the the video is long enough right now. So um, thank you for watching. Um, next time we are probably going to add uh, like a, a frame. So we get at least collisions at the top and bottom of the frame and maybe even a, a score, but not sure about that. So maybe see you next time and goodbye for now.